Hey guys, it's nice to see you again here on the channel. It's okay and I actually can't believe that this is my 63rd upload on the channel. But technically it's my 60th for the year 2020. 60 videos uploaded on this channel for the year 2020. And I began this year with a very simple mantra which has provided me with, you know, the kind of energy that has seen me through, quite frankly, one of my favorite or one of the best years in a very long time. I would say that it's one of my favorite years of my adult life. And I know it sounds a bit odd to say that a year like 2020 has been amazing for you. Like, dude, like, were you asleep the whole time or what? But that's, that's the truth for me. I started this year from a new beginning mindset. I had just quit my job in order to start afresh as a freelancer. So for me, no matter what happened in this year, my mantra was to do, to learn, and to repeat do learn repeat. I've tried to embody it in every venture I have attempted and it's paying off for me so far. And I had, I really had no expectations except following through with, you know, the ideas that I got and learning from them as much as I could. That was all for me. I was ready to take in the experience and learn as I go. On the part of earning as a freelancer, I honestly didn't expect so much. So I guess it's why I'm kind of blown away because I didn't set a target, but some way, somehow, even in the pandemic, my needs have been met and have been exceeded. So all I have to say is I am very grateful. So yeah, let me share some of the lessons I may have picked up on the way this year, just 2020, which may mean a lot to you in 2021. And these are in no particular order of importance, but I found that they may be connected to each other one way or the other. That's why for me, it's really important. So the first one is to start, to begin. I guess in order for everything to add up, we have to start somewhere. That's the truth. I made a huge leap into what seemed to be a dark space. It didn't make sense before because I didn't know where I was going other than what I had imagined or where I'd imagined I wanted to go. And this can be likened to, you know, being confronted with a dark path, which you choose or you chose. You have a vision of what lies beyond this path. You know where you want to go, but your torch can only see as far as your feet. And at this point, you have to start moving to shed more light on the rest of the path and what's in front of you. So it's only in taking the first step and the next and the next and the next that you uncover what comes your way. And based on your abilities, you know how to deal with these things that come your way should anything come. Whatever your idea is, whatever your plan is, it will just continue to be or remain an intangible part of you until you start. Your idea isn't too difficult. It is not too outrageous. It's your path and you never know what you can get out of this journey till you take your first step. That's what I can say. And I use this analogy of the torch here to kind of represent your abilities, the research that will go into this particular thing you want to do and the backup plans that you may have. Otherwise, you're literally just walking into the dark and that's not fun. The second thing is progress over perfection. <laughs> I don't like this one. One of the things that I'm you know, learning to come to terms with this year is the thing that has always been, yes, or continues to be the bane or a bane in my life, which is progress over perfection. As an overthinker, it's usually the other way around for me. I'd, I'd prefer perfection over progress. Or better still, perfection is the only way. If it must be done, it cannot fail. There's no room for failure. Otherwise, why do it? It has to be done correctly. It's the best or nothing. The end result has to be worth it. Otherwise, why try? And I seem to forget that perfection isn't generic and what I think may be perfect may be mediocre to someone else and the things that you know I think are my best that I I mean not, are not my best and shouldn't see the light of day turns out rather okay so perfection was only in my head or has only been in my head and this mindset has stopped me from beginning so many things because I didn't think they'd be perfectly done if I didn't have everything in place to make sure that I do not fail. So one of the key lessons or advices I have finally decided to practice this year is progress over perfection. The struggle has always been, you know, due to my general lack of patience and 
usual huge expectations of things and their outcomes. And guess how it had become easier for me this year to just get over this perfection mentality? It's just by doing, learning, and repeating. The third point is consistency is the only key. Now this year has taught us more than probably any other year collectively. I know it doesn't sound over the top when I actually say that this year it made more sense and it hit home to recognize that there will always be obstacles and unexpected things coming our way. Worldwide, our biggest unexpected challenge has been dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. Everybody's gone through it. Now, what unexpected things do to an overthinking, paranoid person like me is to throw me off completely. It does. Coming from the previous point I made, which is progress over perfection, I sometimes, you know, tend to give up easily on things because my perfect plan got interrupted by something else. Like, well, it's not my fault that it failed or not my fault that I didn't see it through. You know, something else happened and it's not my fault. And that's why I couldn't finish. So at least, you know, I could share the blame with something that I didn't ask for. That's what it makes it easy for me to. So with progress over perfection also comes consistency. Progress is nice and all, but if you try consistency, with progress, you know, the momentum isn't necessarily even for me. That's my opinion of progress. I'm not quitting, no, but I'm not exactly doing it as consistently as I should. That's how I can define progress. Consistency is what keeps the ball rolling and making you admire progress even more. If you get that momentum and you don't use it or keep moving, you have a tougher time breaking through obstacles. I think physics even says it. With consistency, you know, I've, I've adopted a shorter burst, you know, experimentation theory where I tell myself that I'm going to try this thing for a week or a month to see where it goes. And then after that, why not continue to see where it goes, continue some more till it becomes easier to just do it and it becomes a habit. So I guess these two go hand in hand progress and consistency. And even when you don't feel like it, why not just do a little to honor your commitment of seeing some through or something through for the time period that you gave yourself. That's how it works for me. Four is to give yourself time to rest. Point four. Now the hunger to thrive has been more real this year than when you know I got my first job in 2012. Starting on a fresh page, you really can't be picky with opportunities that come your way. You know, you learn to look at what you can get from you know what comes your way than just immediately dismissing it, which is what I usually tend to do. Basically, there's no wrong or right. That's what it is. So this year being the year that, you know, I sought to explore creativity on my own terms and conditioning myself to give, you know, give it 500% almost all the time. For some reason, coming into the year with, you know, such a flat expectation background of how my day to day would be, I found myself always working. I would either be working on a personal idea or I'll be overthinking how I would exceed expectations for someone I wanted to work with or somebody who wanted to work with me. And this, I always believed, would solidify things, you know, like, you know, putting a stronger foot forward all the time. And again, this was more like a mutated version of perfection over progress because I always was working where I tell myself that I'm making progress, but I forget that with a steady climb, rest is also required at some point. I've said it in different videos on this channel that we need to know when to stop. And I'm only at the end of the year and gradually, actually consciously enforcing this for myself. It's not been easy. So the fifth point I would say is you can't do it all. Ask for help. This is extremely difficult for me or someone who has always wanted to be self-reliant by virtue of the fact that he's a perfectionist and also extremely hard to impress. So I usually tend to do things my own way. And I find that it's a big drawback, but I usually can help it. There was also, I mean, there was so much that I wanted to do this year when the year began. So many personal projects, you know, that needed collaboration to execute. I thought I did a decent job, you know, communicating these expectations to the people I wanted to work with. I also tried as much as possible to let things happen. 
without interference or trying to micromanage as people are very capable. But things didn't go as planned with most of them and I ended up shelving them and moving on to things within my personal reach. Again, relying on myself to do it. After all, I didn't start the year only trying to explore and not make a living. Man must drop. However, I have to say that in some very few instances where I have asked for help from other people and let them do what they are very capable of doing, it turned out to be pretty amazing. So I'm grateful for that. And there are also instances where I asked for help for things that were brewing or coming my way that ended up falling through. But the truth is, it was really good to know that there was help out there, people who were willing to help whenever those projects would actually happen. So overall, it's been the best part of my learning experience, but I'm not going to be stopped from asking for help. I'm still gonna ask for help. Help is very important for growth. You can learn a lot from it, so ask for help. Point number six, a jack of all trades is a master of none, simply. I honestly didn't know how to title this particular lesson. I'd wanted to call it, you can't do it all again, or don't dip your finger in every jar, which has way too many interpretations. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, um, I explored or toyed with a lot of ideas that were potential income earners. And as a freelancer, you feel that there's a lot of room to explore multiple streams of income. That's what it is. And there's actually a ton of ways to go about this. So many things. I have watched so many videos on things you can do to earn extra money and not have to do it full time. There are people who have cracked this particular code and are making so much money without having to do too much work. So it made sense to give it a shot. And this birthday, I had you know, a couple of ideas, including my very own merchandise brand, which for some reason has stalled. Let me just say for one major reason, I completely underestimated the fact that it's not a low maintenance kind of income stream and that it requires a lot of work and attention. And so coming from my previous lesson of asking for help, because you can't do it all, I am going to find help in sustaining this venture because I see it as having a really great potential and I don't want to let go of it. So on that note, if you're one of those people who supported Quams, my merch, from the beginning, I really appreciate your love and support and I promise I'm going to streamline things or streamline how to do things and get more for you very soon. And let me also apologize sincerely to all who were caught in the shortage space where I couldn't meet your order requirements due to a few, you know, structural inconsistencies. I'm going to reform all those things and I'll come back better, I promise. So lesson here for me is do not scramble to take on more than you can manage without actually thinking things through. You can't do everything. It's better to do a few things and be thorough than to do a lot with 20% effort. Which brings me to my final point or final lesson. Failure is amazing. When I began the year, I was, you know, starting on a blank canvas, like I said, coming from being in a structured space or a structured environment for about eight years. And for the first time in my life, I was excited about experimenting. I was excited to try things. And rather strangely, I was also excited about the failures that would I would encounter because failures, you know, would at least be on my own term and I would be solely responsible for getting around them and actually doing better. So that was it for me. I honestly also thought that I'd have a lot of time on my hands, not doing so much. So I guess I, I was pleasantly surprised with how the year turned out so far. I managed to do so much, especially with this vlog being one of the biggest experiences and experiments for me, which fortunately is still ongoing. At uh, certain points in the journey when I would feel comfortable with some of the things that I, would, I was doing because I was consistent, I was tempted to take on more and do different things, whether they were, you know, income earning or not. And that's where I got caught in being overwhelmed by some of the things which I wasn't able to apply the level of consistency I'd hoped to do. But like I said, 
in the beginning of this, I mean, point. The beauty of it all was that I was going to be able to do this on my own terms and take responsibility for them, which quite frankly was rather or has been rather liberating for me. That I was able to learn and decided what I would want to try again uh, another way or what needed to be continued or what I didn't have too much energy to spend on. So I hope to fail some more in the new year and learn from these experiences that have made this year such a great one for me. Yeah. So I'm truly happy with how 2020 has turned out and I so look forward to the next one. So in signing off this year with my last video of 2020, I would like to do something which I've also learned to do a lot this year, which is making a conscious effort to remember the little things that I have done adding up to the bigger picture and be truly grateful for them. I have said it in more than one video this year that gratitude goes a long way and also celebrating your little wins means more in the long run. So on that note, I'm truly grateful for your life, spending your time and your energies with me and being part of this journey, which is still continuing. And you're one of the reasons why my year 2020 has been amazing and I couldn't be more grateful. And to all those I personally encountered who walked with me, who shared with me, gave me, taught me, you know yourselves. If I decide to mention names and forget some, I'll be in trouble. So all I can say is you're all truly wonderful and I love you. Mwah. So thank you all for making 2020 the best. Catch you in a few days. Happy New Year to you and peace. Oh.